the whole idea is that by the time someone leaves, they really can implement this themselves back in their own lives. So uh, while someone's there, they're going to get guidance from you know, a psychiatrist and a nurse and a dietitian, and there's going to be a chef cooking meals. But in addition, everyone's going to learn how to cook. They're going to learn why they're making these changes. They're going to learn how to go shopping for the foods at the grocery store. We're going to do that together. We're going to order food at restaurants and takeout that comply with their meal plan. Harvard-trained psychiatrist and chief medical officer of Ellenhorn, Dr. Matthew Bernstein, joins us to talk about his groundbreaking new residential treatment program using ketogenic and metabolic therapies to treat mental health disorders. Welcome to Metabolic Mind, a nonprofit initiative of Bazooki Group, transforming the study and treatment of mental disorders by exploring the connection between metabolism and brain health. Thank you for joining us on this journey. All right, Dr. Matthew Bernstein, welcome back to Metabolic Mind. Thanks for having me. It's my pleasure to be back. Yeah, well, well, I'm excited to have you here to talk to you to talk to you about all the the new program that you have at Ellenhorn. But before we get into that, for those who haven't watched your previous episodes here at Metabolic Mind, give us a quick background of who you are and why we're talking today. Sure. So I'm a clinical psychiatrist. Uh, been practicing a little over 20 years. I uh, trained at Mass General in McLean, and I've been the and I worked in McLean for many years. I've been the chief medical officer at Ellenhorn for about 12 years, um, and I still have some affiliation with McLean Hospital as well. Great, great. And now, through your work at Ellenhorn, um, you have sort of been on your own metabolic psychiatry journey over the past few years, learning more about it and now implementing it. And we've had you know, interviews and discussions about that. You were at the Metabolic Health Summit um, just this past January um, uh, discussing Ellen Horn and all the things you were doing. And of course, even before that, you helped organize and put on the first dedicated metabolic psychiatry conference at Ellen Horn. So you've really accomplished a tremendous amount. Um, and now there's a new program called the Accord Program at Ellen Horn. So tell us what the Accord Program is, and then we can talk maybe you know about the specifics about who who it's for and and what they might benefit from. Sure. Yeah. There's a lot to talk about, and I'm 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 really excited to share this with you and and the listeners. Uh, so I've been, as you said, um, really focused on metabolic approaches to mental health for a few years now, learning everything I can and employing it with my patients. Uh, having really amazing results that have just blown me away. So I've gotten more and more into it as I go, as I see the power of these treatments. Um, and so Ellenhorn is a program that is a, is a program in Boston, New York, and LA. All of our branches are focused on psychosocial rehabilitation in the community. And we're now offering a metabolic psychiatry track at Ellenhorn. Um, but in addition to that, I'm really excited to talk with you today about a brand new program called Accord, as you mentioned, which is a, an affiliate of Ellen Hart. Um, it's a separate company, uh, and we're going to be opening a dedicated, immersive metabolic psychiatry program in Arlington, Massachusetts this summer. So it's extremely exciting. Yeah. I mean, one of the um, unfortunate things, I guess you could say, about about metabolic psychiatry, about medical, or sorry, about metabolic therapies for mental health disorders is that we hear from a number of people like, I don't know where to start. I don't know where to get treatment. I don't know how to start this and 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 how can I find somebody? And, and granted, there are people, more doctors, more therapists, more coaches getting trained, but there isn't sort of as of yet one spot to go. Um, but now with all the interest, it sounds like there are a couple popping up, maybe one at McLean and now one here at Ellenhorn. So so tell us what who this is for, really, and and sort of what the what you envision the experience will be like. As you said, it's it's not that easy for people to implement these changes in their lives. These are these are big changes, as we've uh, talked about. We're talking about you know sometimes complete revamping of what people are eating, um, getting off of foods that are sometimes addictive and challenging to stop eating. We're also talking about other lifestyle changes like, um, you know, getting more in tune with circadian rhythms and sleep and meditation and movement exercise. It's a lot to, to a lot of change to make. And, you know, we're also talking about doing this for people who are already 
um, having difficulties because of a mental health challenge. Uh, and so what we're offering is an immersive experience where there's going to be a dedicated staff that's going to help someone make all of these changes in their lives um, while they're living in the program. It's going to be a minimum of a one month stay. Um, and people are all going to start the program together. So it's a small house. We're only going to have five people at a time living there. Uh, and everyone's going to start at the same time. So there's going to be that power of the support of the group as well. Everyone's going to be doing this challenging thing together. And we all know that it's easier to do hard things when you're doing it with other people, you know, trying to do the same challenge at the same time. Yeah, I love that aspect of it. People coming together to help each other. I mean, we see even just online chat groups and online support groups can be so helpful, but just magnify that even more to be there 24 seven living together, going through similar struggles together and learning from each other and having similar successes together. Um, and that type right. of environment I just think is so powerful. So, I mean, will they be learning to cook their meals and learning and, and from, from soup to, soup to nuts, so to speak about like how this is done. Absolutely. Yeah. I love, I love the soup to nuts. Uh, <laughs> you might have to steal that from you. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, absolutely. Yeah. We're going to have an extensive, um, educational program. The whole idea is that by the time someone leaves, they really can implement this themselves back in their own lives. So, uh, while someone's there, they're going to get guidance from, you know, psychiatrist and a nurse and a dietitian, and there's going to be a chef cooking meals. But in addition, everyone's going to learn how to cook. They're going to learn why they're making these changes. They're going to learn how to go shopping for the foods at the grocery store. We're going to do that together. We're going to order food at restaurants and take out that comply with their meal plans. Um, we're going to do additionally, all these other metabolic, um, you know, enhancements such as you know, getting in tune with circadian rhythms and working with light and sleep and movement and uh, all of these things at the same time. So we expect people to get really good results while they're there, but also most importantly, that they're going to be able to continue this when they get home. Yeah. Yeah. So important to make that transition back to home and not just make it a, a one month thing and then back to regular life that yeah, right. you have to be able to make those changes. Now, we, we've had a lot of discussions and done videos here at Metabolic Mind about, you know, it's important to do this under clinical guidance, that there are some things that can change. And we just recently did a video about the potential risk for hypomania and how that um, might need to be addressed when uh, transitioning onto a ketogenic diet. Um, so will there be a psychiatrist taking over the care of these individuals? Because I assume, I assume they could come from anywhere. So let's start with that question. Can they come from anywhere? And then once they're there, do you have a staff psychiatrist taking over the care of these individuals? Yeah, good question. Yeah, people can come from anywhere. That's the beauty of a residential program. Um, you don't, you know, we can we can take people from all over the country and really, you know, any country. Um, and, and yes, I'm going to be the psychiatrist for the people while they're in the program. So I'm very happy and excited to be part of the team that's going to be providing this care and creating um, the treatment. And so I'll be the one who's you know helping to guide um, you know how we're going to integrate the metabolic approach with the mental health approach. Yeah, yeah, so important. And then then when they go home though, then I assume they would transition back to their primary psychiatrist, whoever that may be. So. How do you envision that happening? I mean, do you, do you envision a little bit of pushback or a little bit of, of um, trouble sort of bringing their psychiatrist on board? Or the flip side, is this just like the perfect opportunity for them to see the benefits that are happening and come on board? Yeah, I mean, I, I really and I hope it's the latter most of the time. I think there is a great opportunity for uh, a lot of community psychiatrists to see what happens to their patients while they're in our program to see these changes, the improvements in their metabolism and, and improvements in their mental health. And then you know, we certainly will provide a really, you know, comprehensive pass off back to those treaters. Uh, you know, we can have a written packet sort of explaining everything that happened and, and pass off with the individual clinicians as well, as people are willing to get on the phone with us to let them know what we've seen and what we recommend going forward. And the hope would be, yeah, not only will people get to keep doing this with someone who now, you know, someone who, with someone who hopefully now knows more about it and maybe starts getting themselves and in, in these kind of approaches in their own practice. Yeah, yeah, that's a great point. Now, 
in terms of just trying to think who these people would be, like who would be your ideal candidate to come out here and to come out there and, and take part of this? If, you know, if someone's currently in an inpatient facility and they're about to get discharged, could they come straight there? Or do you want them sort of home and stable for a little while out of the hospital before they come? Like, do you have any, any regulations about who you can and can't take on as a, as a patient? Yeah, I, those are great questions. I mean, I think that, you know, probably if someone's coming right out of an inpatient unit, this might be a little much for them to take on most of the time. I, mean, I could see that happening in some circumstances, but probably in others, it may not make sense. You know, someone really needs to be ready to make all these changes in their life. Uh, you know, we said that it's hard to do these things, but someone still needs to have made a decision that they want to do these things. They want to try. I think that's the most important ingredient, um, even if it's going to feel hard and they don't know how they could possibly do it. But if they really want to do it, if they have that desire, then I think that's the raw material that we can work with to, you know, get these changes to happen. Yeah. Yeah. And does it matter if they're on medications or had recent med medication changes, stable medications, does any of that matter or not, not so much? I don't think it matters that much. I mean, I think, you know, we can figure out where their medications are and, you know, you know, I have a lot of experience doing that kind of a thing. Um, but it, it's really, again, you know, that they're in a position to make these changes. They know they want to make these changes and there's a sense that they can successfully complete the program. We, we certainly don't want to have people come and then not be able to do the program and then feel like that was, you know, a bad experience or a failure. Um, and so, you know, we will pay some attention to whether we think someone's capable of doing the program. But I think, you know, that we're going to set it up in such a way that uh, that will apply to a lot of people, that people will be capable of doing this program. Great. Yeah. Great. Yeah. And, you know, a brand new program, nothing like this has ever really existed. So I'm sure yeah. it, it falls outside of the insurance coverage because insurance usually lags way behind on these types of, of treatments. But do you have any hope that something like this could be covered by insurance someday? Yeah, I do. I mean, you know, I really wished, you know, we lived in a world where insurance would cover residential care for severe mental health issues. And not only do they not cover metabolic treatment, you know, residential metabolic care, you know, generally insurance companies don't cover residential care at all for mental health disorders. And that's really, uh, you know, too bad, I think, because I think there's a role for residential treatments, targeted residential treatments such as this. Uh, but yeah, I think, you know, if we have success and we're, we're planning on collecting data about our outcomes and, and data for other reasons too, we can get into maybe some of the, the research aspects if you're interested. Uh, but with data showing positive outcomes, not only for mental health, but also for physical health, you know, a smart insurance company should look at that and say, yeah. this might be really cost effective. Not only can we prevent the next psychiatric hospitalizations, but maybe we can prevent people from being on very expensive medications for mental health and metabolism. Maybe we can prevent the next case of diabetes or heart attack, um, you know, with these metabolic interventions. So, you know, it really does make sense from a cost efficiency point of view if we're thinking about the big picture. And I think, you know, hopefully, you know, more innovative, you know, forward thinking insurance companies would be thinking that way. And we'll certainly, you know, in future phases, our goal would be to try to use some of this data to help lobby uh, payers to think think that way. Yeah, yeah, I just I just had an interview with Julie Milder, who's our director of neuroscience here at, at um at Pazuki Group. And, you know, one of the things we talked about was sort of like, where is the evidence and how there's randomized controlled trials starting, which is really exciting, but that that's not the only level of evidence. You know, people going through their regular clinical practice and collecting data, the real world experience can be so helpful and so impactful. We've seen Dr. David Unwin do that for uh, ketogenic therapies for type 2 diabetes and now seeing the same happen in metabolic psychiatry is so important because it can inform the clinician about maybe which patients do better than others or different considerations of of concerns or or um, techniques for success in that real world setting that you might not get in a really structured randomized controlled trial so i'm really glad you're you're talking about that because it, and, and and have a, a heads up for that as you start enrolling people. So, will they will this be part of like a an IRB type thing or just oh yeah good? So tell me more so, about that. Yeah, well, I've been talking with some of some colleagues over at McLean about applying for an IRB and partnering with them around collecting research data. 
Um, and so that's the plan. We're going to prospectively collect the data. Um, we're going to collect lots of information um, and, and uh, measurements as part of the clinical program anyway, uh, because we know that when people see what's happening in their ketone meter and can correlate to that to how they feel or see what's happening on their CGM device and correlate that with how they feel and what they ate, uh, we know how powerful that can be for motivation. And so that's been part of the conception of the program from the beginning, that we're going to be collecting tons of information and using that as part of the motivation to keep going with these changes. Uh, but that prevent, you know, presents this incredible opportunity to also collect prospective research data. Um, and so that's what our plan is. And hopefully we'll be able to not only see the, the outcomes, you know, the benefit in the mental health outcomes, but we'll also be able to make these correlations between these behaviors and the outcomes and also metabolic markers and the outcomes because we'll collect so many points of metabolic marker data with mental health outcome data. So there's, it's going to be a very rich data source, I think, for you know, exactly what you had said before about you know, figuring out what specifically works and also which markers to be measuring while you're doing these treatments in the clinical setting. Yeah, I love I love that. And so like everybody who comes, everybody gets a CGM, everybody's checking their ketones, everybody's getting that kind of data. Ah, oh, that's so powerful that you're going to learn so much and and individuals are going to learn so much, which I think is great. And and actually since you're talking about CGMs, that makes me think of another question here that a, a number of people might have coexisting type 2 diabetes or be on insulin or, or be on um, you know, SGLT2s or GLP1s, you know, the the um, diabetes medications. Will you be able to take those patients as well and help manage those medications as you go along with ketogenic therapy? Yes, that is the goal. Um, I, you know, being a psychiatrist, I'm not comfortable managing diabetes myself, uh, but I will have the, you know, be able to, you know, consult and have outsourcing of some of that consultation for diabetes management. So that's still, uh, the details are still getting worked out about exactly how we're going to do that. Yeah. But that's certainly part of the plan. We don't want to have to exclude someone because, you know, they develop type two diabetes as part of their, you know, metabolic condition, right. um, as part of their, um, you know, you know, possibly due to the medications that they're on, you know, they shouldn't be disqualified. They're actually the folks I think who will benefit the most right. from this program. Yeah. And so really want to include them and I'm going to figure out how to get the right consultative help so that we can include uh, patients like that. Yeah. And, and then I guess the other question then is what about the, the specific psychiatric diagnosis, knowing that there's a lot of crossover between the diagnoses, but, you know, bipolar disorder, right. schizoaffective disorder, schizophrenia, major depression, or is there a, a limit or, or specific ones that you're looking for? You know, we're, we're pretty open to all of these diagnoses. Um, you know, I'm, I'm a, I've been a general psychiatrist for a long time and I feel comfortable with all of these different types of presentations and different you know, problems that people encounter in their mental health. Uh, and so we're not really limited um, by diagnosis. I would say the one area that we would probably shy away from is, you know, people who are currently restricting and, and underweight from their anorexia. Um, for, for pretty obvious reasons that it's, I think it would be a challenge to, you know, undertake a, a dietary intervention like this. If, you know, in the process of, you know, if people are worried about their health because of being underweight. But other than that, I feel like this could work in all of those diagnoses that you, that you named. And it's really more the idea is, you know, does someone believe that improving their metabolism is going to improve their mental health? Are they willing to make these changes to improve their metabolism? Is that something that they want to put the effort into doing? Um, we, you know, we're pretty agnostic about which diagnosis it is. Yeah. So generalized anxiety disorder, ADHD, what? like any of those that could potentially improve. And, you know, a lot of the research is focusing on the serious mental illness um, diagnoses, right. um, but there's potential for it to help so many other people. I mean, it's a, any brain-based disorder potentially could improve with improved metabolic health and changing the fuel source, but we just need to learn more and collect the data and experience it. So I, I'm so glad that you're, that you're doing that. Absolutely. And, and just to make the point that, you know, some of these other diagnoses, you know, may not be called, you know, technically severe mental illness, you know, something like generalized anxiety or panic disorder or ADHD, but there are some people who are suffering tremendously from those conditions. It's, you know, they're absolutely impacting their lives in a severe way. And so, um, you know, I, I don't think we want to, you know, exclude people from a program like this because, 
you know, they don't meet certain severity criteria. Yeah, great point. Well, so we are recording this um, in sort of mid-March 2024. So when can we hope to see uh, it open and, and start enrolling patients? It's planning to open this summer, summer 2024. So yeah, very excited. Uh, we're busily, you know, planning and hiring and creating the programming as we speak. And, you know, so that we can be ready to welcome our first cohort with open arms in, in the summer. And so yeah. where should people go to, to learn more and stay up to date with the progress? So we have a website uh, that's also a work in progress, but we have enough there that people can start looking at it and checking it out. It's uh, accordmh.com. What does the MH yeah. stand for? Mental health. Oh, okay. Yeah. Good. Good. So Accord MH. G's with some other accords, I think. Oh, yeah. the, like the car. The car. <laughs> and maybe the, the diabetes <laughs> study. And yeah. Okay. Yeah, exactly. So accordmh.com is our, is our website. Yeah. Very good. Very good. Well, look, I mean, you are, you've become a true pioneer in, in this field. Um, even though you you could say you've only been in it for a few years with, whereas others have been in it longer, but what you've accomplished and what you've contributed to the field in such a short amount of time is, is really remarkable. So thank you for your work. And I'm really excited to see this program and see all the data and the experience and the knowledge you're going to gain from it and the people that you're going to help and the lives you're going to change. So Thank you very much, and I'm I'm really excited to monitor your, the progress of this. Thanks so much, Brett. Yeah, I'm I'm really excited to be part of this um, this metabolic psychiatry movement, um, and uh, really, really just excited that uh, we're going to get this off the ground and um, st being able to start to work with some some individuals in this way that would never really has been done.